now we know how to allocate and apportion our production overheads to each of our cost centres within the factory environment. Now when we were doing our apportionment, we didn't really have to make too much of a distinction between our production cost centres and our service cost centres. It wasn't necessary for us to really think about the difference between the two. For our step three, we are going to have to consider our production cost centres and our service cost centres. So just to make sure we're all clear on what each of these two things are. So our production cost centres are the cost centres which are involved in the production of units of output. Now our service cost centres are not involved in the physical production of our output. Instead, they provide some kind of support or service to the production cost centres. So our service cost centres will still be part of our factory environment, although they do not actually produce our units of output. So we'll just note down then our service cost centres do not produce physical units. Instead, they provide support to the production cost centres. So for example, we might have a machine maintenance department. So the machine maintenance department might consist of a number of engineers and when one of the machines breaks down, someone from our machine maintenance department will go along to the production cost centre and get them back up and running. So they are part of our production factory environment, but they do not produce physical units of output. So why do we need to make this distinction? Let's have a quick look back at our flow diagram. We see we've done steps one and two, allocation and apportionment. So now all of our overhead costs are sitting in our production or service cost centres. But remember, the aim of the game is to calculate our full production overhead cost per unit. And before we can do that, we need to bring our overhead costs as close as possible to that production environment. So for that reason, any of the costs we now have sitting in our service cost centre, we want to move these over to our production cost centre in some fair way. And this is our step three, reapportionment. Let's have a look at an example then and see how we reapportion those costs from the service cost centre to the production cost centres. Okay, so in this question, we're told the ABC Washing Machine Co. produces a standard washing machine in three production departments, machining, assembly and finishing. In addition to that, they have two service departments providing some kind of support to those production cost centres. We're told that the costs for last year were as follows. So we have the costs which have already been allocated and apportioned to each of these cost centres, our indirect materials and wages and other indirect costs. So steps one and two have been completed for us. We are also given the percentage usage of each of our two service cost centres. And this is the information we are going to use to reapportion those costs into the production cost centres. 
So the first thing we want to do is just get a total of how much costs we currently have sitting in each of these cost centres. So we'll set up a new table. So we're doing step three, reapportionment. And we know we have our machining department, our assembly department, our finishing department, and then our service cost centers, materials handling, and production control. So currently then, the cost sitting in each department we have 41,920 in the machining department, 12,960 in assembly, 7,920 in finishing. If we look at materials handling, we have 4,000 plus 8,000 plus 8,000. So that gives us a total of 20,000. And in production control, we have 11,200 plus 2,400 gives us 13,600. Right, so this is our starting point. We need to reapportion the costs in our service cost center over to our production cost centers. And for that, we're going to look at our percentage usage figures. So if our machining department uses 60% of the resource or time of materials handling, then we're going to give 60% of the costs in our materials handling department over to the machining department. Likewise, if the machining department uses 40% of the production controls resources, then we're going to give them 40% of production controls costs. Now there's just one little thing we need to be careful of. We need to look at, do either of our service cost centers use the time of the other one? And we see that our materials handling department uses 10% of production control's time. But production control doesn't use up any of materials handling's time. In a situation like this, we would always begin by reapportioning the cost of the production control department. So we're going to reapportion this cost first. The reason we need to start with them is because we need to work out how much of that cost is going to be going into materials handling. So let's have a look at the calculations. The first thing we are going to do is reapportion our production control. So I have said PC, I'm talking about production control which has a total cost of 13,600. We've said that 40% of production control's time is spent in machining. So we're going to give them 40% of the cost, which will be 5,440. We're going to give 30% to assembly. which will work out at 4,080. We're giving 20% to the finishing department, so 20% of 13,600 gives us 2,720. And finally, we're giving the last 10% to materials handling. So we're just taking the percentages we were given in the question and using them to divide out that cost. So now we've reapportioned all the costs out of production control. If we do a quick subtotal then, 
we now have 46,732,000 in machining, 17,040 in assembly, 10,640 in finishing, 21,360 in materials handling, and we've taken all the costs out of our production control department. So now we see that our total costs for materials handling, when we include their share from production control, are 21,360. And we have to apportion the full 21,360 across the other production cost centers. So again, we're just going to look at the percentages we have to do this. So we'll give 60% to machining, 30% to assembly, and 10% to finishing. Doing the calculations then, so now we're reapportioning. So we're giving 60% of the 21,360 to machining. 30% to assembly and the final 10% to finishing. Working those numbers through, we see that the machining department's share will be 12,816. Assembly is 6,408. Finishing is 2,136. And now we've reapportioned all the costs out of materials handling. And now we can see we have fully reapportioned the entire 21,360 from our service cost center into our production cost centers. So all that's left now is to do our totals. And we see that in our machining department, we have 46,732 plus 12,816, giving us 59,548. Our total overhead cost in the assembly department is 23,448. And finally, in the finishing department, we've got 12,776. With no overhead costs left in our service cost centre. So we have now completed step three, reapportionment.